Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Jake Whip, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use 360 photos and videos inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now you can do everything that I'm going to show you in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so no need to upgrade to the studio version for any of these features. But before we get started, make sure you guys give the video a like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on a brand new video. And if you guys want to support the channel even further, you can become a member at my Buy Me A Coffee page down at the link in the description. With that, you guys will get access to all my project files and stuff like that. But anyways, let's get into the video. Okay, so now I'm inside of DaVinci Resolve, and up in my media pool, I just have a few 360 images that I have imported that are all ready for me to use. Now, all of these were taken from a drone using the DJI Air 2S. It has a built-in sphere function where once you just press a button, it'll take a bunch of photos and stitch them all together. So the only downfall about this is up at the top, there's not gonna be any information. It's just gonna be blurred out, but rest of it looks absolutely amazing, and I would totally recommend uh, checking this drone out. There's a link down below if you guys want it. But anyways, I'm gonna grab a few Fusion Composition, and now that we have a Fusion Composition, I'm going to do Control D and set this to be 15 seconds long, then I can hit Change, and then let's head over to the Fusion page. And now inside of Fusion, what I want to do is come up to my media pool and just import my first image that I want to use. And now that I have this image, I can view it off to the side, and then I will add in a shape node. And with the shape node, I will set the shape to be a sphere, and if I view this off to the side, I'll scale the radius all the way up to 10. I can pan around and you can see that it has mapped the image onto the sphere so you can now look around uh, like you're actually there. But so the only issue is is it's mapped onto the back side of the sphere so that means everything is inverted. So after the media in we just need to add a transform node and flip it on the horizontal axis. And once you do that everything will be oriented correctly as it was in the original photo. Next up we'll add in a camera node and merge this up with a shape node and we can view the merge node off to the side. Then we'll grab a render node and put the merge node into the render 3D node and view the render 3D node off on the right. Now over in the merge node we can right click and then do camera, camera 3D1. So now our 3D viewer is at the perspective of the camera node. And if we hold down Alt in middle mouse wheel and pan around, it, this will adjust all the rotation settings on the camera so we can look around like we were actually there. So let's come into the camera node and then bring the angle of view up, all right, until about like 40, 45 is what I like. Uh, maybe even 50, make it a little bit bigger. But now I can pan around and it's a little bit wider of an angle of view. So you can just change that using the angle of view right here. So let's put it at about right there. Uh, no, a little bit, a little bit farther in. So if you accidentally forget to hit Alt uh, when you move it around, as you can see, it'll move the X, Y, and Z uh, positions over in the side here. So an easy way to prevent that is just right clicking on each of these and doing expression, right? And we can just do expression on all of them and not type anything in. So now they're all locked at zero. So if I try and move it around in my viewer here, I can only move it around on the rotation, uh, but I can't zoom in and I can't um, just pan around. All right, so that just keeps it locked right in the middle, which is exactly what you want. So then let's go to the first frame and I can just position this, like let's say looking right there at those islands. Then I'll add keyframes on all of the rotation properties and that'll come, let's say 180 frames forward. And then I'll just pan it around a little bit. Maybe we can look down there. So now if we come back to the beginning, it'll just slowly pan down to the side. And since it's a 3D effect, yeah, it'll take a little bit longer to render. I can come over here, and if I set it to OpenGL render, it just seems to go a little bit faster for me. But I can also come here and right click and then uncheck high quality. And I can also check auto proxy. So like if I'm in the camera view and I pan it around, it'll uh, bring the resolution down just so it's easier to move around on that frame. Let me just make sure that I delete those keyframes that I added, but I'm gonna come up to the spline editor, drag my camera over, and do zoom to fit. I can select all these and hit F on my keyboard so it'll just smooth them out a little bit. I'm hit T, and I'm gonna hit the lock button, and adjust the ease in, bring it up to about 50. Then I'll grab the last keyframes, and I'm gonna make it a little bit longer just so it's a little slower. And now that I have that done, I can come into the render 3D node, come over to settings, and check motion blur. Bring the quality up to 10, that's about what I usually like. And then bring the render 3D node into the media out. On the edit page, I can right click and I can do render in place. Then I can just select, select QuickTime and do one of these formats, then hit render. And after selecting a file destination, it'll quickly just render this out and then bring it back in as a QuickTime file that'll be able to play back in real time. 
All right, as you can see, that looks really cool as it just pans right on down. And you can substitute any image into that little setup that we created there. So you can go ahead and save it as a macro or something like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on another video like this. If you guys have any tutorial suggestions or questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. With all that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.